What's up, YouTube? Tom with Thomas Fishing. Hey, guys. I finally was able to go brim fish on yesterday. And when I tell you we caught some monster bluegills, I'm talking about some monster bluegills. Uh, had a friend that uh, we finally hooked up once again. We hooked up last year and went one time. And so I got my one time to go this year as well. I'm going to show you all my setup before I show you all these brim. But let me tell you all a little bit about these brim. There are several, several, several brim that weigh over a pound. And uh, several of them weigh over. I mean, several of them are 11, 12, several 10 inches. I think all of them at least 10 inches. Every last one of them at least 10 inches. But it's several of them that's 11 and 12 inches. I'm going to show you all this setup. I know it's a little different from... Uh, with everybody bluegill and shell cracker fish with uh, me personally i don't use the slip cork uh i know you can i know it work well i use uh the cork that has the uh the lead weight on it the clip on cork that's what i use walmart you get three in a pack don't cost much at all the hooks that i use i use the number five and the number six hooks that's what i use all the time number five number six and the reason why I uh, use them, I don't like those uh, them long skin them because they bend around, they get so stuck, or they get down, stuck down their throat so far. Uh, I use a split shot sometimes, but not all the time, and I'm gonna tell y'all why in just a minute. But if I use a split shot, it'll be the, uh, the little small, small, small five. That's what I use. And uh, I also use the swivels. I use a swivel, and that's what you attach your hook on with. And I'm gonna show y'all that right quick before I forget. Uh, so that's the swivel right here. So I would attach it on if I wanted to go to like a, uh, from a five to a four or a four to a five. I could change it real quick, pop it on just that quick, and uh, and clip it on. And that's what I, uh, my hands huge. I know they don't look big, but I got some big hands. But that's what I use right here. That's a number, I think this is a number four hook. I mean, number five hook. This is hook here right here. So, that's the setup I use as far as the hook, uh, the split shots, and the, uh, cork. The, uh, the reel that I use, this is a hypersensitive, uh, seven foot, uh, my reel right here, it's a uh, five to four ratio. Man, I can cast this thing about 40 feet. Uh, I did put braid on here because I wanted to be able to throw further. Uh, you could throw further with, uh, I mean, you could throw forward with mono, but braid, it just gets out there a long way. And then sometimes you might hook up with a bass around these beds and stuff. And uh, this, uh, this seven foot pole right here, uh, it's set up to dock shoot, man. I'm gonna show y'all the the way it bends. You see that? I'm, I mean, I'm really, I'm, I'm loading up on it right now. So, brim, catching brim on it. Oh, you talking about something fun? Y'all see that? Load up on it. And it don't weigh nothing at all. And uh, as y'all can see, I don't have the lead on here. I don't have a split shot on here. The reason why I don't have a split shot on here, yesterday we fished with crickets and wet worms. So I want that bait to fall real slow, dead like that. So when he see me, just come up there and get it. You got the lead on it, it's going to fall a little faster. So when you got the red worms on it, them worms are moving around and it's falling slow versus the lead on there is falling, you know, a little steady like that. That's why I don't care about using the split shots, uh, fishing in the beds. But you could, I mean, you could do it how you want to do it. That's just the way I do it. This is my setup and this is how it looks. That's about how deep I was fishing yesterday. And we was catching the, uh, the bluegills and the shell crackers. Uh, they was right off the bank. It wasn't too far. It was beds everywhere. Uh, the rain came through. It gave us a little delay while well, we waited it out. And uh, we still was able to get back there on them, man. I was just so happy. I was able to do a different style of fishing. I wasn't able to record yesterday. I wanted to, but you know how that is. Sometimes you just can't record. But uh, this pole right here. I, I probably had this seven footer for about four years now, and I never had a problem with it. But this right here is a seven foot hypersensitive, uh, uh, it's a Jinko pole, actually. 
seven. You get this on the Jinko website. Uh, I'm gonna show y'all these big old blue gears. Y'all gonna love this, y'all. Hey, I'm happy. I'm pumped by blue gears. That's what I grew up doing. I love it. I love it. I love it. I just don't have much time to do it. This the only time I do it is when they're on the beds. I do bring them fish. Y'all just don't know about it, but I do bring them fish. I love it, and I'm about to show it to you. All right, guys. Like I promised to you, I'm gonna show y'all these uh these blue gills and these shell crackers. Uh, make sure y'all hit that like and that subscribe button for your boy. And uh, this channel's still growing, and I appreciate all the wonderful support. Uh, these brim, these shell crackers, I'm proud of. Them. I'm about to show them to you. Check out these huge shell crackers right here. That's a monster right there. I'm gonna weigh that one for y'all. All these blue gills on this table are between 11 and 12 inches. All of these right here, huge blue gills. Man, I wish I could have put that camera on this on yesterday while I was catching, while while we was catching, because we showed out. Look at these huge blue gills. I think I weighed this one right here. It weighed a little over a pound, not much over a pound. Y'all thought that was it, huh? Look at this. He got some more right here. Huge blue gear. It's incredible, man. They are on them beds. Got our first full moon of May, and that's usually when they, they get ready. I think the shell crackers are going a little early, but the blue gears, you know, they come around in May, the first full moon in May. For us down here in Mississippi, because I've been seeing a lot of blue gear on social media. All right, so y'all know I got a bag, right? So I had to go in there and see what was in there. You know they in there. Big old crappie right there. Big old crappie. So I'm gonna weigh a few of these uh these shell crackers for y'all. Let y'all see how much they weigh. Because that one right there, that's unbelievable. Unbelievable, guys. Monster blue gear. All right, so this this big shell cracker right here. I'm about to put it on the scale. See what it weigh. I know y'all like to see that weight, that live weight, and it's dead. So you know it probably a way more. It's zeroed out. It probably a way more uh, alive. I know it will. Let's see what she looking like. One fifty-eight. Y'all see that? Well, it's moving around. Get an actual weight. 156. <laughs> a blue gear, y'all. Y'all see that? <laughs> I mean, a, a shell cracker. Y'all see that? That's real. <laughs> I'm going to wear another one. Just so y'all see it, that's the other shell cracker. A little old mouth. One thirty-six. One thirty-six. It's crazy. So, guys, that's just some of the weights on them shell crackers. Of course, the blue gear they like point ninety-eight. I got a few of them that weigh, you know, a pound or whatever. But for the most part, those shell crackers we didn't have but three of them. But man, they were some hosting, man. Y'all stay tuned. I'm going to clean a few up. I'm going to show y'all how I butterfly my uh my blue gears. I'm going to scrape a few of them, too. And um, you know what? I'm going to fillet some of them, too. Y'all stay tuned. All right, guys. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scale a few real quick. Uh, back to the basics when I was a little boy. That's what we did. Scale with a spoon. That's how we use. Spoon or fork. Uh, man, I was just sitting here thinking, man. Uh, fishing, man. It's the only sport that I think, man, in my opinion, that you can get people from all different races, all different nationalities. Man, we come together. It's just something about it. Because just think about all the time that the boaters have been uh, fishing and help people out if they had a problem on the lake. Uh, I know I've helped out plenty of strangers. Look at this big uh, male right here. I've helped out plenty of strangers uh on the lake because you don't want to see them you know scroll to get back to land yeah i think i think fishing man i just think it's just overall a great sport and it brings all the goodness out of people more people need to start going fishing i guess but uh it's been good especially these brim i love brim fish i love it i just don't do it as much as i used to when i was younger as a kid 
That's all me and my family used to do and all my partners. I think I fished every single Saturday when I was in high school. I'm gonna tell y'all a quick story. Y'all gonna think this funny right here. So, I used to power lift in high school. I was a junior, right? Uh, we had a power lifting meet in Jackson, in Jackson, Mississippi. It was a state championship uh, meet. And uh, it was on a Thursday evening, right after uh, practice or whatever. My coach came to me and said, hey, we got that meeting. I need you to be at the field house at 6, at 6 a.m. He said, don't go fishing, because I know you're going to try to go. I said, all right, I'll be there. My partner Chad called me. He said, hey, we're going to get them brim. <laughs> we would have got them brim. We went fishing that Saturday morning, man. He came by my house. My mom said he come by there looking for me. I went brim fishing. I ain't care. That's what I want to do. I wanted to go brim fishing. And that's exactly what I did at all. The thing about it is I could have won the state four-way as a junior uh, with about 80 pounds. I was that much stronger than uh, the rest of the guys in that class. I was in the 190 class, I think, or something like that. But I could have won a state ring if I wouldn't have took my butt fishing. But I did anyway, so it didn't matter. But we caught them brim, so. But that's just one of them things uh, that happens, you know. I wanted to go brim fishing, I didn't care. I'm gonna show y'all how, uh, how I butterfly these brims right quick. And I'ma still have skin, and I'ma still have that rib cage in the center. That's the last one I'ma scale. I don't wanna bore y'all with scaling brims. I know y'all know how to do that. And I'm also gonna fillet some of those big fish. So, it's one of these big blue gills. I'ma fillet it the same way. The same way. And I know y'all seen me do a cropper like this. Same way, go behind it. I know they gotta be big rims to be able to do this. Same way, get close to the end, I'ma stop. I'ma turn it over, not turn it over, I'ma turn it over. Flip it over. Same way, same deal. Get right there, stop. Open up, cut that off. It's just that section right there. And look at yonder right there. That's gonna be some, look at that skin on that joke. Look at that tail. That's gonna be good right there. That's gonna be real good. I'm gonna do one more. Do this big male right here. Same way. And these brim, they fillet so easy. If you wanna fillet something, brim fillet, super easy. Super easy. I'm gonna call my daddy in a minute. I need some help. Call my daddy. I know he gonna come. Same thing. Cut it right here. And I know some people think you leave meat and all that. Where is the meat? Nothing. You gonna be mad if I give you that. But I'm gonna make you happy when I turn around and give you that right there. Y'all see that? That's pretty slick right there. Alright YouTube, so I just called my dad. I told him I was over here in the bind. I needed some help. Him and one of his buddies was over there digging worms. They're getting ready to go fishing. But what he don't know is I put those fish back in that cooler and they are packed in that cooler right now. And uh, this man, when I tell you he got a passion for fishing, he got a crazy passion for fishing. Uh, and that's probably one of the main things that I picked up from. That's why I love him so much because he chose one of the greatest sports that you could fish in. But I want y'all to see his expression where he pull up and he see all these fish at this cool. It's gonna be crazy, y'all. I done put them back in the cooler already. They go all the blue gear back in the cooler. They're already back in there. Look at that jump. That's crazy how big that shell crack is though. Y'all stay tuned. All right, what's going on? Hey, I told y'all he coming. We about to get him now. What'd you say? Yeah. Man, I don't want no trip. Now you gonna be on camera. I don't want no no I don't want no problem. Be talking crazy. Don't, don't look up in there unless you got your eyesight. Don't make no damn bring. <laughs> <laughs> what? what man, what you gotta say? 
Huh? Why you wonder. throw that lid off like that? Lord, how much? <laughs> The Lord is in the blessing business, let me tell you. You, you got to book me on a trip like that, I tell you. Don't you, around big and white budget, man. I thought you were going to dig some, I thought you were digging one. I, I, I was, but you told me you needed some help over here. You sure need some help over here. You gonna help me? Yes, sir. <laughs> Be glad to, love to. Much love to you. Oh. All right, man, we got a lot of cleaning to do. So I got my grease going right here. I usually get it up around 3.15, 3.30, somewhere in there. And uh, I also got my brim. My wife, she wants some property, so I got the property ready too. I like a lot of seasoning on mine. And I got that battle bowl right there. That's what I'm gonna put it in now. We're gonna shake it up and we're gonna roll it. All right, y'all stay tuned. All right, guys, so I'm back. Look at that old bluegill, storm. bit more fishy, just a little bit more. But that's right there. Y'all hear that? You hear that? Time to come out. Woo! All right, guys. The bluegills are done. I like mine crispy. Bring them out right quick. Give y'all a little side view and a close up view. Look at that. Some old bluegills right there. It's my eating guy. It's a side that y'all never see. But I love bluegill. I love them. Look at that big old Woo, that's hot. These are mine. Look at that. That's that butterfly right there. Look at that. That's perfection right there. Look at that. I don't know if I'm gonna make it past the old three, but I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna try to get them three down. I know it's gonna be hard. And y'all be sure to go to their website www.stumpthumping.com man and get all the fishing apparel the thomas fishing apparel now the slab row apparel the fishing line the jigs the hair jigs the jig pose all that good stuff guys and remember the thump is real